Hello guys and girls, I welcome you all. In this week episode we gonna build a three and a half centimeters ultralight bus crankbait out of balsa wood. It will be useful also for chub perch fishing if you're living in Europe or crappy bluegill fishing as the length is in the end of the day just one and a half inch. So sit comfortably, grab a beer, popcorn and enjoy the video. Balsa sheet is 6 millimeters. This again will be a build from two halves. So I'm marking now at 6 millimeters on both sides to trace the upper profile of the lure. one side because of course by folding it in half and cutting it out we'll be able to trace it our our upper view so I trace down the beginning of the lure the thickest part uh, sideways and I also want to have it the tallest part of the lure body so now I'm drawing uh, the, the rough shape, of course there is a lot of, a lot of corrections, a lot of uh, starting over until finally we're happy with the shape. I'm also measuring how deep the beep should go into the lure and it is 5.5 mm, so I'll make a note about it. So now I'm happy with the profile of the bait. I'm taking some old hook box, which is made out of the thin plastic, and I will trace the shape of the lure into that plastic. After I will cut it out with the exacto knife. So my exacto knife has this uh, rotary blade so it is easier to trace uh, roundish lines and uh, this uh, will be used of course for the uh, tracing the lure shape into the wood uh, on this episode but then of course I'll keep it for the future and use it each time I'm making this crankbait. Once it is cut out, we just need to remove it and then we can use it. And as you can see, it matches perfectly the previously drawn uh, lure shape. By having this hard template, we can trace it onto our balsa sheet using just a regular pen now I already know what's the thickness of the wood I can separate it from the rest of the board of course I'm keeping in mind uh, to have this piece as long as tulur bag now I'm cutting also the side of it in order to have it available for cutting it then in half and sticking it together three 
previous videos of the trout minnow and the zender minnow or sebas minnow you saw me using uh, two dabs of the super glue however now i bought this double sided tape and this is actually working uh, very well in terms of uh, carving and shaping the lure but after it's separating much easier than the super glue and it doesn't create this funny hard spots of the balsa so it is easier to make the indentation for the true wire so i recommend this method more than the two dabs of the super glue however in the video of the ice fishing lure i was uh, using this method as well but it was a hard wood not a balsa and then it wasn't strong enough so if you have a hard wood then i guess you should go with the super glue so cut out now roughly the shape around the lure just using the, the paper knife the whatever you want to call it modeling knife now i will start uh, carving the lure into the exact shape into the exact lines so I want to be sure I have nice and sharp blade. I'm always using alpha blades into all my knives and this type and the exacto knife. They are the sharpest and holding the edge the longest. So always be sure your knife is nice and sharp because the accidents actually happen when you have a blunt knife. Here I'm carving towards myself with the newly replaced sharp blade. This is not the safest method, but if you pay enough attention and have enough experience, shouldn't be dangerous to you. However, if you're young, if you're just a kid and try to make your own lures, or if you're not very experienced, I would rather recommend to carve uh, from yourself than towards yourself, or at least wear some protection on your finger, like a piece of uh, plaster or something like that. And now we have the lure body shaped exactly as we want it. Little imperfections here and there from the from the knife carving. Of course, we still can find. So in order to be sure we are exactly symmetrical, we're putting the sandpaper on the flat surface and sending it that way. Of course, if you have a disc sander, good for you. I would recommend in that part to use it if you have it. So now I'm splitting the two halves. Notice how much easier compared to the to the super glue from the trout minnow making video it is just separating it then you take a knife peel it off it doesn't leave any residue or nothing like that now as a main weight for this lure i'm using the tungsten b four millimeters uh, in size it weighs half a gram it is a slotted one used uh, to tie the nymph for fly fish sorry guys here accidentally i deleted the footage of the uh, this hole making the, the mark for the holes so the holes for the weight uh, I'm making now with my Dremel tool so they need to be symmetrical and the weights will fit with plenty space now this little uh, glass rattle I wanted to install it to have the rattle in this uh, in this loop unfortunately it came out a little bit too big for this lure body i would have an issue putting through wire so even though this is already the smallest size i was thinking about the alternative and what i decided to do is again punch the little holes on the back of the lure and now i'm punching little pieces of plastic in order uh, to make the walls of this rattle chamber that now i'm building a little bit uh, harder then the balsa around so the rattle will actually make nice sound i'm putting it uh, sticking it there 
with the super glue and making sure that they're sitting nice and flush to the to the hole just squishing them with the little little rod come up with i will use just these little tiny steel balls from this rat toy bam cracking it with the hammer be careful with the glass shards so instead of pick it by hand i will use my tweezers and put these three little metal balls into my rattle chamber Now I'm trying to check if the rattle actually works, but my microphone really sucks, so please uh, raise the volume to hear anything. So maybe you could, maybe you couldn't hear anything, however the rattle is working, so I'm happy about it. I don't want to have it uh, too loud. So this part we starting our through wire bending for this one stainless steel 0.5 millimeter thickness so very light stuff but obviously we're making ultra light crankbait so no need for any heavier heavier things so now I'm just gonna do a quick montage is to have my uh, weight exactly symmetrically in the middle of the lure I'm placing it on my internal wire so be, uh, be sure that obviously you do that before you continue with the further bends otherwise you wouldn't be able to thread in there again and here the wire is completed what I did here also to be again sure that I have it exactly symmetrical I glue this bead in the right position on the internal wire using the UV Q resin and it stays there nice and firm exactly centered on my wire which is exactly centered in the middle of the lure and in that case I can ensure that the symmetry of the weight is uh, as perfect as possible. So guys now I'm test fitting the wire I will sandwich it between the body two parts of the body and press it hard that will create the imprint of the wire on the balsa and after this imprint I can trace it and make it a slightly deeper so the wire fits nicely and the lure body parts staying uh, close together so as you can see it leaves a little mark and I'm using this uh, tool to make the dots on the nails of course this is the same tool that I'm making the dots on my trout lures so I just trace it now I fit the wire placing the beads for the rattle chamber gluing it always using super glue that also hardens the internal part of the balsa so the wire sits there uh, more strong than it would be if you would use any different glue the only thing you need to be very precise by gluing these two halves together because once they touch each other they're already solid and there is no possibility to separate them here however i did beautiful job i'm having them completely flush and aligned now i'm putting my lure into the tiny vise to be sure that I have exactly parallel cut for my lip slot or I'm cutting the lip slot so by guiding the saw on the uh, flat part of the jaw of the vise I'm ensuring that I'm actually having nice and straight also I'm monitoring how it looks from the top so I don't cut too deep on one side compared to the other deep slot is cut to be sure that it's slightly wider I'm using the coarse 
sandpaper and now the test feed of my beep and it stays there nicely shaping the lure slowly starting from the face then the tail and then we go the chamfer line sending and so on so here not much to comment so just enjoy the video i'll do quick montage both of the carving and sending Sending of the lure starting with 240 grit sandpaper for the most part and then the final sending with 400 to be sure that everything is nice and smooth. Now the final check of the sender lure blank to be sure that everything is smooth, symmetrical and sealing of the wood with my favorite super glue. Of course not using bare finger for it but making this little finger condom from latex glove. And again as in the last video I'm cutting only one finger so I don't need the whole glove. So each time one glove lasts me for five lures. After the glue dry out, I'm going again with the very fine sandpaper, in this case 600 grit, to smooth the lure again and also making sure that the glue didn't stack my beep slot, I'm sending it inside as well. And at that point my lure is ready to either way go to the epoxy or to varnish. And here is one lure that I just recently completed for my friend David. This is a 5 cm trout minnow for twitching in the nice little delicate winter colors. 
to be sure guys that you can check all my lures please visit my instagram channel such a gel custom lures same name as the youtube channel this time i will seal the the lure properly by dipping it in the hard slack this is a polyurethane resin something like the kbs in usa and i don't know what guys or the cellulose uh, cement that you use in japan this uh, is my method to be sure that it's not setting up on you so instead of open the the can each time i just make a hole towards the top of the can and close it with the screw and each time i'm using it because i use it only for the ultralight lures this little jar after the medicine is perfect because it's completely sealed whenever i need it i can just refill it through the small hole and during refill like that through the small hole there is not that much oxygen uh, that goes in and out especially uh, the moisture which actually sets this varnish then you just simply put the screw back in an important thing is to use the screw that has this little uh, rubber seal underneath this one is one that you use normally to screw the decking of the roof the metal decking of the roof and now the usual dipping method so just be sure everything is ready so your jar is open as short as possible again because you do not want uh, to expose this expose this varnish to the elements meaning uh, the air and the moisture in the air so it stays longer active and you don't use that much of it so i guess guys that using kbs also could use this tip of course if you are a custom painter and you're dipping 200 lures a week then i guess uh, you don't have the problem with the varnish setting on you but if you're just like an amateur and want to make few lures uh, from week to week this is a good tip uh, to keep it long time and not to waste too much of it so yeah now i'm be sure that i'm closing it before i even put the lure uh, to hang and again i'm hanging the lure because i never make more than one two three small lures at the time i'm just having this wire in the in the box after the chocolates so it's nice and transparent i can see if the if the coating is good no any air bubbles but i can also keep it closed to avoid any debris from the ceiling or something like that falling on my on my lure and the only last thing uh, left to do once you put the lure already to hanging is again to clean the beep slot this time i'm just using little piece of paper in my tweezers in order to remove the excess of the varnish from the beep slot so i won't have any issue later on end of the part one thank you very much for watching please consider subscribing to the channel if you like the content i see you guys next saturday on my weekly lure building tutorial take care and see you next week bye bye